Hi, Julia. Hi, Leora. Hi, welcome. Welcome. We're having a sunny afternoon chat in in October. How cool is that? Gorgeous. I can see the sunshine outside. It's really lovely. Making the most of it. Gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, so oh, it's. Yeah, I'm really, really excited that we're able to have this this menstrual cycle awareness chat because um, you you are a woman that oozes passion. <laughs> you ooze passion from every every pore. So. Yeah, I'm quite passionate about. Yeah, I'm passionate about the work that I do and the life that I live. Yeah, yeah, and and it you know it's bit palpable every time we talk and every time you meet and anything that I read from you, it's 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 a joy. So <laughs> I'm looking forward. To, I'm looking forward to today. <laughs> so to give a wee introduction to um, to what you do, Julia, you are a as I say passionate yoga yoga teacher and enthusiast. Um, teaching a range of yoga modalities, which um, I'll be putting your, your details underneath the, the video so everyone who wants to get hold of you can get hold of you. But what I adore is that you're not only, you're not only offering your teaching, you, you share the love. <laughs> you share the love with your face. You, you, you love your space. But the fact that you bring in so many people to be teaching from your space is, it's such a gift and so generous and so beautiful. So as a, as a thank you for, <laughs> for the time that I've been in your space, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful thing you do. <laughs> I'm really glad that you think so. Really you and possibly, um, yeah, we, so we met, we met on a Wild Power workshop. We did. Was it was it two years ago. Wild so. One of the first Wild Power workshops. Yeah. Coming out the Wild Power book. And um, then I was kind of hunting. I didn't know where you lived. And I hunted and I was like, oh, Leora's not far away from me. Could you come <laughs> out? I think we sat in the garden in my, in my garden and, and chatted for a couple of hours about um, our journey as women and coming into menstrual cycle awareness and yeah that's how we met that's how i remember sharing yeah that's right i remember i was gorgeous we remember sharing you i was i had my bleed at the time i remember sharing showing you my red bracelet and you were like oh yeah <laughs> i remember asking you because at, at that time you were posting daily pictures yeah. of your cycle and I remember asking you how you did that because I was learning how to become technically a bit more savvy <laughs> and I wanted to know how how can I do what you're doing how can I share my daily cycle with the world through pictures so yeah yeah, yeah I'm still doing that <laughs> good like my children are still following you on Instagram yes that's true <laughs> it is it is it's your daughter I keep thinking it's you but it's your daughter isn't it <laughs> Oh, so, but the other space that we did share that was so, so precious was our daughters having their men art ceremony together. Yes. Which, yes. Um, which is, it's not just something special that we shared, but just to get the message out there that, that, teen, that pre-teens who may or may not have started their periods uh, to experience that sacredness before they enter the bleeding time of their life was oh, such a gift with our Melanie Syrup. I know. And to a, yeah, to have a coming of age ceremony, yeah. which is what it was, that is about what it's meant to be about, about yeah. the first bleed and about coming into maidenhood rather than becoming a woman, you know, the... 11 and 10 I think yes um, yeah yeah I love that yeah. we have that as mothers I love that we have that as mothers and I believe that looking back you know we've we've unpacked our own kind of uh, menarch journey our, our first bleed journeys ourselves it'd be nice to think that they've got something very very beautiful to unpack when they go mm. back to remember where they were there at that age so yeah can yeah. you just picture that? The different, <laughs> different conversations 
that can be had. So let's let's um yeah let's give ourselves a little cuddle for, for the gift that our girls have had. Yeah, I think and encouraging, like, and yeah. encouraging women out there to to really consider this to be something to to invite their daughters to do with them. Yeah, yeah, and they, their daughters don't even need to know a great deal about what they're being invited to do. They can mm. come and experience it, mm. and we can trust that there are women out there like Melanie and there are others that we can, you know, yeah. um, who can um, really make it something very special for mothers at home. So, Julia, your practice. <laughs> Menstrual cycle awareness. I, you know, it, it's, I can see that it is a, a daily practice for you and you describe it as a personal practice, which is really beautiful as a yoga teacher it would be very easy to fall to fall back on your training and what you know but but how you invite menstrual cycle awareness so wholeheartedly into your life i'd love to know how how you weave that into your work i have weaved it into my work more and more explicitly as the years go by so i've become braver in <laughs> including it in my practice and now in many of my classes um, I begin you know we might lie down to come in contact with our body notice how we're feeling and then we'll sit in circle and I have men sitting in the circle women sitting in the circle um, women who are in the middle of their cycles women who have contraception who are using contraceptives women who are um, wombless men who are definitely roomless and we sit in circle together and we welcome each other by their name into the room and we check in with our season so we check in with winter spring summer autumn so in menstrual cycle awareness what that means is winter is when you have your period summer is ovulation spring is pre-ovulation and autumn is pre-menstruum um, and what I short, I, the short word I use for that in class is winter, it means you got out of bed this morning and you might want to go, go straight back into bed this morning. <laughs> you might want to have a hot water bottle. It, it correlates with the winter season where you want to cuddle up and look after yourself. Spring, I have really associated that with feeling sprightly and young and vivacious and jumping up and down. Uh -huh. But I was reminded recently, because that's often how I jump out of water myself, I mean, out of winter myself, um, about the tenderness of spring actually mm -hmm. and about there are moments in springtime where you feel very unsure on your feet and you're a bit bambi-ish and i actually need to remind myself and others that's why it's a continuing process that spring can be a very vulnerable time too um, and then summer is i'm feeling like i own my my practice so in summer you are most likely to do whatever you want to do in class regardless of what's going on self-care is going to happen because you don't care about the person next to you and what they're doing but also you might feel quite energetic and powerful in your practice and like full of energy and really ready to go for it and then autumn has various things that can happen with it one can be feeling self-conscious feeling not okay another what i love about saying that thing about autumn is that autumn can be I've got no idea I don't know how I feel today mm -hmm. really don't know yeah. so it gives people permission to go I don't know I'm <laughs> picking autumn it can also be a critical time yeah. it, it, it's associated with all the negative things that come up for periods in women um, so it can be all of that as well but it can also be a cutting through the you know what as well oh, as yeah. we can say um, that then. yeah um, so I use I'll, I'll use a shorthand, I might use one of those because I don't spend 15 minutes saying it. And then people who've come to the class for a while get very used to just saying spring, summer, autumn, winter as they go around the class. And then I've got an idea of the energy in the room. And also I've got a very clear idea of who's in winter. And so the people who've said they're in winter, I know I have got a, du I've got a duty of care to everyone, but I've got a special duty of care to people who are actually in their bleed time if they're women. So... I've got a very obvious duty of care. And rather than what used to happen maybe three or four years ago, people would text me and let me know. I know in class. Yeah. I feel I've, I've developed. And certainly for me, mental cycle awareness is an ongoing learning journey for me. Absolutely. So living it 
and teaching it and being in it means that nuances come into it all the time and my so, teaching comes. So you mentioned that there are men, that there are men in your class as well. So that, I'd love that. Absolutely love that. So tell me how they share their seasonal awareness. So they're given a very easy blueprint to go by. Winter, really tired. Summer, full of energy. Spring, sprightly or sensitive. Mm. Autumn, critical. You know, I've got the boogeyman coming in my ear. They all experience that. They all have the ups and downs of life. And they are really happy. They're all really happy to say, hi, I'm in winter. Hi, I'm in autumn. I've never had, I, I have had men come up to me in the street who I know who go, hi, Julia, I'm feeling premenstrual. You know, they, they laugh about it with me. <laughs> yeah. But I'd rather, be, you know, we need the men to be in our feminist and feminine party with us. You know, there are occasions where the men in my life have gone really do you have to do this and I'd rather them have that conversation with me yeah. and if they're feeling left out or vulnerable or upset because of the rise of the feminine let them let us know that but let's include them in the party because if we exclude them then who knows you know they need to be part of the party well it's a balance of the two it's yeah. It's, it's not gender related. It is an absolute balance of the two. So yeah. I love it that you include it and I love it that it's a conversation and I love it that it is, the taboo is being broken. Yeah. And, and they, also, can, they can have a laugh with it as well. They can, they can totally have a laugh with it. But also in yoga practice, because it's a physical, like, it's a mental health, health, health awareness week, I think at the moment. Yeah. And it's day to day, uh, yeah. Day. But, well, mm -hmm. yeah. So I was thinking about this, that today and I teach an embodied practice and for me I can't separate the physical from the mental. I can't, you know, I feel, I feel my anger in my body, I feel my passion in my body, I feel my sadness in my body. So that, an expression of that can be used in the yoga studio with our movements and there are out there movements and in their movements and that you might express that as a masculine and a feminine but that they're only words and where we've all got masculine and feminine in us women have got fierceness men have got sensitivity in the world that we live in it feels easier for women to cry and it feels easier for men to express anger but that doesn't mean that men don't get upset and that women don't feel angry so we need to recognize that balance and know that our bodies can be used to demonstrate that or to, you know, if I, there's pose of the child, which is like a curling up. Mm. Well, that's looking, at that self care, that's looking after us. There's warrior pose. It is what it, you know, it, is what it says, it's standing strong. Um, we work with our chakras. There's the grounding chakras that feel, make us feel connected to the earth. And then there's other ones, other practices that make us feel elevated and up to the sky. So we're living what life is. And you know, so it's a, it's a mini, it's a mini safe reflection yeah. of the world. Beautiful. Yeah. Get yourself to Julia's classes is what I say. <laughs> you don't get just yoga. You get the balance of the masculine and feminine and menstrual cycle awareness. It's the lot. <laughs> <laughs> so taking it out of the yoga studio, menstrual cycle awareness in your, in your life, how, what changes have you seen? Or it might be, I could ask your family what changes have they seen. But asking you, what changes have you seen? The changes that I've seen is when I first came to menstrual cycle awareness, it was in a very broad context. So it was very winter, bleed, summer, ovulation. It was really, really broad. Yeah. And I was trying to teach myself how to look after myself in yeah. winter. That was, a, that was a big thing to me, was teaching myself how, and how to recognize the archetype. So I've just described the archetype, how to recognize that. And then when Wild Power came out, I was transcribing for Shani and Annie Grubb and I was like, really? I was learning as I was writing. And they talk about a daily practice, the daily charting of the cycle. Yeah. So I started do, I was like helping them out, I might as well do what they tell me to do. And as I did that, 
there were big things that came up. So I really noticed two or three days in my premenstruum where I was fierce and not necessarily the best ways possible, but I kind of could recognize that. So I started recognizing patterns in my cycle. Yes. And as time goes by, I also recognize anomalies in my cycle as well. Mm -hmm. I'm much more likely to recognize an anomaly and honor an anomaly. Um, and I'm also much more as in, likely as in, uh, to as in, as in, for that particular cycle. Yeah, as in it is high summer, but actually what I need is a winter self-care. Yes. That kind of anomaly. Um, so I'm noticing that. I've also got two bleeding daughters now, which I didn't use to have. Mm -hmm. And then it's who self-care takes precedent? How can I ensure that they're letting me know when they've got their bleed so that I can look after them then? What happens in a, if all three of us go together? <laughs> you know, going well, that's so, the red ten, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it becomes richer and richer. And also, I'm a human being. And so you could ask my family. A, a friend of mine said to me, "You're the least yen yoga, the least zen yoga teacher I've ever met." And I just thought, "Well, I'm a human yoga teacher, and hopefully, what I bring to the studio is a real human being. And I, what I try to bring to the studio is my rubbish. So not in a bad way, but in a like, mm -hmm. I, I deal with this." Yoga helps me in this way. Mm -hmm. So we've been do, we've been focusing on the throat, throat chakra this week, and I've been and we talked about how how do we have the conversation with people that it doesn't feel comfortable having the conversation with. Yeah. So um, allow you know feeling heard, but also listening to what might feel uncomfortable to listen because that's a struggle that I have. I find it a real challenge to put my tongue behind my teeth <laughs> <laughs> and listen, even in the home environment of listening to my daughters or listening to my husband. Yeah. So, you know, I'm a human being who, ha who fails all the time. Um, and that's another thing I do in my practice. We practice balancing a lot. And one of the best reasons to balance is to fall. We learn to fall, we practice falling. Then when we fall, it's not such a shock and we can get back up again. Yeah. So, yeah. They, that's how it happens in my life. Real yoga. Yeah, real yoga. <laughs> Mess and all. Yeah, that's perfect. No pretense there. No. <laughs> yeah, working with authenticity, that, that gets me in the heart. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> mm, so, becoming the queen of, self, of your own self-care and recognize yeah as you say you transcribed you transcribed some of, of wild power so you were there at the source of of the book that that is the that is the blueprint for menstrual cycle awareness out there now so um it's a question we ask everybody from uh, through form and kind yeah. what is your favorite self-kindness what is your what what are your acts of self kindness? I will, I will say first of all, I say I get it wrong a lot. So looking yeah. after myself is probably my biggest challenge, yeah. and often I find that I haven't looked after myself in a way that would be most beneficial to me, and that's a constant um, in my life is recognizing where and how I need to self care. Mm. Um, I have a lot that I, <laughs> that, I, that I draw on. I love yoga nidra practice. I love lying down and practicing yoga nidra. I wish I had someone every week to practice it live with, with me. I do for my students, but um, I use recordings more than, more than anything else for myself. Um, I walk in nature. Most mornings I go out and I walk in nature and I need to hear the birds sing or I need to hear the rain on my head or I need to smell the earth or, you know, that is a really necessary practice for me. Um, I may sit, I may sit for 20 minutes and be, I may use an audio recording to support that practice or I may just put, put a timer on or I might put a metronome on which does six mm -hmm. seconds in, six seconds out. So that might be a practice. I might sit on my mat or go on fours on my mat and then notice 
and then do whatever my body feels that it wants to do movement wise. I do a lot of physical practice in my teaching. Mm -hmm. I don't want to exhaust myself by doing 57 sun salutes outside the studio. <laughs> Sometimes I need that. Um, if I'm mentally in a really not okay place, once or twice in my life I've gone for a run. But it's really when I, some people absolutely love that as a regular daily practice. That's my, you know, my fight and flight is working so hard that I have to run it out into the woods. And I, if I'm not in that place, I'd much rather meander and look at the sun and notice that, you know, I'm really noticing the leaves change at the moment. And I'm really aware that some trees have gone completely red and some have got little bits of yellow on the top of them. And, and knowing that, there's the sunrise and the sunset at the moment and we're in a perfect kind of season in the UK to actually see the sun. So you could have seen the sunrise this morning about kind of 6.37 and early evening, um, kind of 7-ish, we'll notice the sun come down. Why wait to go on holiday to watch the sunrise and the sunset? Um, so for, that, for me, those are all self-care practices. I'm a sole practitioner. I can feel like I haven't spoken to a human being that isn't a client all day. So self-care for me is having a listening partner. So yes. you know what that is, mm -hmm. some people don't, but that's a whole other world. That's, that's self-care. Bringing people into these, my studio that I want to experience stuff from, that's a self-care practice. So Melanie comes and runs her moon circle one Friday a month. Why? Because I asked her to, because I want her there to look after me. You know, that, that is yeah. cool. Yeah there so it's a constant in my life looking at self-care wonderful and isn't that interesting that practically everything you've described there actually would put you in the zen yoga teacher <laughs> that's a great everything you described really is zen really is just looking in on yourself isn't it so yeah just just yeah <laughs> You haven't only seen me shouting at my children or, you know, not, not, you know, like, then there's the real life. Absolutely. But, yeah. but yeah. from everything you share today, that, that's exactly what you bring to what you do. Yeah. The authenticity yeah. and, hey, I'm a real person. This is what it's like. Let's fall. Let's all fall together. We yeah. don't have standing trees together. Let's all fall together. Let's all fall together. <laughs> how many people in yoga classes say yeah fall when you fall you can get back up again it teaches me how to fall i don't know whether that's a done teaching practice with many yoga teachers but i do <laughs> yeah your unique take <laughs> oh it's i knew it wasn't going to be long enough but um yeah we are going to to bring our time to a close and say a huge thank you, Julia. It's, um, it's just so refreshing. It's a refreshing voice out there in yoga practice. So yeah, get yourself to Finchley Yoga is what I say. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see, yeah, it's just so obvious that you will see menstrual cycle awareness in practice out beyond into the workplace. Yeah. <laughs> You, you will definitely see that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I've really enjoyed chatting with you today, Leora. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Bye. Bye.